A lot of times in life, we tend to focus on the exterior to determine our happiness. And the thing is, is like, it's not our fault. It's just the way that we've been conditioned. It's the way that society runs. We say, oh, we'll be happy when we get that job or that house or that relationship or that money or fill in the freaking blank. And so we focus so freaking hard on those things that we actually give our power away to them. Everything that determines our life and our happiness is out of our control. The second that you start to understand and focus on yourself and that that will affect all areas of your life, you start to regain your power. And this is otherwise known as your self concept. The way that you view yourself in every situation, in every relationship, in every scenario. Another way to look at this is your self-worth. Understanding that truly to change your life and to take that control back, the only freaking thing, yo, the only thing you need to do is focus on your self-concept. That's it. Because when you do that, everything else falls into place, okay? I promise. <laughs> so I want to talk about this movie, and you've probably seen it, and if you haven't, highly recommend watching it called Yes Man with Jim Carrey. Now, I've seen this film before plenty of times, but I never watched it after going through my spiritual awakening. And I'm watching it, right? And I'm like, holy shit, this movie is all about self-concept. <laughs> so while obviously the gist and the concept of the movie is, you know, saying yes to everything, right? It, it heavily shows examples of how when you're focusing on yourself and when you're focusing on things internally, your whole life changes. You become so much more loving and loved and happy and fulfilled and all the things that we all want. You know, like saying yes to you, to experiences, to life, choosing yourself. So in the beginning of the film, right, Jim Carrey, I forget what his character's name is, but he is miserable, he is unhappy, he is depressed, he is like, ugh, like total ick factor, right? Like I'm like, ew, I would never want to be around a person like that. You know, he's got his best friend trying to call him to hang out, this person trying to call, he's ignoring this, like he's just totally focused on mostly his divorce that had happened. And so he had put all his power and all of his happiness within that woman that left him and then divorced him. So something outside of him, right? When he was focused on that situation instead of himself, he over time became wired for being unhappy. And if you want more information on how that wiring in your brain works, I'll link this video right here so you can check that out after this one. But I believe in the film it's three years, like three years have gone by since they got divorced. And so those neurological pathways in his brain got deeper and deeper and deeper and be until his depression and his unhappiness became his personality. You know, it can be difficult and unfamiliar and uncomfortable to make the decision to choose yourself. It can feel unfamiliar to make the decision to change and unfamiliar and difficult to move in the direction of choosing yourself. But I think one of the, the key pieces here is to let go of the pressure of having to change your whole life in an instant. It's taking it step by step and day by day. It's one small tweak here, one little small change there. You know, it's, it's a marathon, okay? It's not a sprint, you know? It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. <laughs> now, I don't know the exact timeline that this film is supposed to cover, but to me, just from watching it, it seems like it's about a year-ish. You know, it, it's not something that just happens overnight, right? Like. It takes time for him to get in the groove of choosing these experiences and choosing himself and finding that happiness within himself, which then reflects everywhere else in his life. It's consistent work and choices every single day. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit you guys and say, oh yeah, it's the easiest friggin' thing in the world. It's not. <laughs> It's gonna take work, but would you rather work to be happy or continue working to be unhappy? 
it really comes down to that simple decision like only you can make that decision for yourself but i'm thinking that if you're subscribed to my channel then you want to be happier so you have to commit to yourself to make those decisions every day and sometimes you're gonna slip and it's cool i slip i psh, I get cranky so often, y'all don't even know, okay? <laughs> but back to the film, you know, it was it was scary for him to especially make that first decision when he gave that homeless man a ride, right? Like he was like, what the fuck? but he did it. And then he ended up running out of gas in the middle of nowhere. You know, throughout the movie, you see him transforming from this negative, angry, miserable person to completely having a different vibe, an out, a different outlook, a more positive outlook on life to the point where more people are drawn to him. Friends, women, experiences. Like all that he did was change from within. Okay, give himself a shot, take his power back from his divorce. And as, as he started to love and bring joy within himself, it drew those things from the exterior to him. The more that you focus on things that bring you joy and make you happy and make you feel loved and fulfilled and all those positive things that we all desire to feel, the easier those decisions become over time and the more joyful you feel. You know, I know I had a video a few months ago talking about raising your set mood, right? Like our baseline mood. And I'll, I'll put that here if you want to check it out after this. But you know, the more you make these decisions to make yourself happy, the easier it is to feel joy and the more consistently you feel happy. Okay. But starting out just like in the film, it's fucking hard. It's really hard, but you just have to take it one step at a time. Another thing I want to point out is it's not always this like linear path, right? You know, sometimes you take 10 steps forward and then you take three steps back. I know I sure do, but overall taking steps forward is what's going to get you where you want to be ultimately. But the thing is, is all that matters, right? All that matters. All you need to do to bring more joy and love and abundance and blah, 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 all the good things, all good shit, right? All you need to do to bring all that shit into your life is choose you, to love you just as you are now. Focus on yourself. Focus on the things that bring you happiness and joy. That's it. That's your assignment, okay? That is your assignment for the next week, okay? Every day, choose one goddamn thing that makes you happy. I don't care if it's a cup of tea. Have it. And on top of choosing yourself and loving yourself, you need to release the things from your past that are holding you back from moving forward in your life and bringing you joy. Like there is no reason to continue to hold on to those things that make you feel like shit. Like why are you doing that to yourself? It makes no sense. Just stop, stop doing it. Let it go, okay? Let it go. Great fucking song though. It's understanding that, you know, people and things and places and shit from your past that have made you unhappy don't need to make you unhappy anymore. Let it go. Even beliefs that you've had in the past, change them. <laughs> the things that keep you stuck and prevent you from moving forward. Say sayonara. Sayonara, motherfucker. Bye. <laughs> And you know what else is really cool about self-concept in the universe that are very much shown in this movie is that the better you treat yourself, the more that you love yourself, the better the world and other people treat you as well. So like towards the end of the film, right? Jim Carrey is supposed to throw his best friend's fiance a bridal shower and he completely forgets. But all of those people that he connected with throughout the rest of the film prior to this shower showed up for him. They came together and they helped him put on this bridal shower in time for this person. He showed up for them and they showed up for him. The better you treat others, the better you treat yourself, the better you treat the world and the planet and animals and plants and people and all the things, you will see that in return. And no one, I'm sorry to say, 
No one can do it for you. It's only that when you decide to change and you decide to truly focus on yourself, that's when real, genuine, lasting change in your life will occur. You can't force it on other people. Like, I can't force it on you, okay? Like in the film, in the beginning of the film, his friends are trying to force him to change and guess what that does? It creates pushback, reverse psychology. Like if you tell me to do something, if I tell you to do something and I'm trying to make you and force you to do this, you're gonna be like, nah bitch, no. So I can't sit here and force you to make these changes, but I hope that this will inspire you to understand that like you, you got the power. Wait, isn't that a Jim Carrey movie too? What is that film? Um, the one where he's God with Morgan Freeman. Oh, I love Morgan Freeman. He's like my favorite actor. <laughs> Oh, Bruce Almighty, Bruce Almighty, whatever. I'm going off on a tangent now. <laughs> They're just like two of my favorite actors in one movie, you know? But regardless of, you know, his friends trying to push him, right? Nothing changes until he decides. When he makes a decision to attend this convention, that is when the change in him begins. And here's a little tip too, like, not only did he attend the convention, not only should you watch this YouTube video and other videos and read this books, but you have to take action, okay? And I, I just don't agree with all of these spiritual teachers on here that say, you know, you don't have to take any action. It should be inspired action. It shouldn't be action that feels forced, but you can't sit there and suck on your thumb and sit on your ass and expect your whole goddamn life to change, okay? So like, do something about it. <laughs> You know, it's powerful to research and to saturate your mind with all of this kind of information and, and motivational content and learning. Like, look, it's all I do every day. <laughs> it's all I do. It's all I enjoy doing. I, I probably watch 10 YouTube videos a day. I'm reading four books right now. Like, I get it, okay? But it's fucking useless if you don't put it into action, if you don't implement those things and and utilize them to actually make the changes and 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 do the things that you're you're learning about it's not going to do anything you watching this video right now is not going to change your life unless you do something about it like check this out like even in the the ending of the video his wife his ex-wife comes crawling back to him. But because his self-concept is so high at that point, he's not interested. He turns her down. When in the beginning of the film, he would have freaking dropped to the floor at the chance of being back with his ex-wife because it was for the wrong reasons. It was because he was putting the value of himself in her, in that relationship. And by the end of the film, when she comes crawling back, that's no longer the case. He doesn't need her to feel loved and happy and joyful anymore. And that is my goal for you and for making this film. And <laughs> this film, <laughs> good. No, uh, making this YouTube video. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you so much. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe so we can hang out again next week. I love you guys so much. And don't forget, be limitlessly, I can't snap with this hand. Be limitlessly yourself, okay? <laughs>